Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. We are looking at the transactive model of reading, creating meaning with print, and I will look at how the brain creates meaning with print in just a minute, but let us define our terms. First, reading is not merely sounding out words, although that is a small part of it. Reading is creating meaning with text. Unless I am creating meaning, technically I am not reading. I could sound out all those words, but unless I understood Latin, I would not be creating meaning. Reading is also a thinking process, not a responding process. I'm not simply responding to letter cues on the page, but I am thinking it's a higher level process. The transactive or interactive model is built on that and it sees reading as a meaning-making process. What's in the head transacts with or interacts with what's on the page to create meaning. It's a two-way process and I'll explain that in just a minute. But what's in the head in the cortex, that's where we store information, interacts with what's on the page, and we use these three queuing systems, and I'll explain that in a minute. So the knowledge stored in our cortex interacts or transacts with what's on the page. I can read and understand things about reading quite well because there's lots of stuff in there related to reading. But uh, try to read and understand stuff about financial analysis? Not so much. Not so much meaning. We use what's in the head. A neurological perspective, how the brain functions during reading. And again, knowledge in that brain is used to create meaning. Cognitive psychology calls these schemas or schemata, which are file folders in the head, uh, 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 and that's kind of a metaphor, but file, think of schemata, schema or schemata, as file folders in your head based on particular bodies of knowledge or concepts. The brain uses three cueing systems, then, to recognize words with print along with this knowledge. The phonological, the syntactical, and the semantic. Information on the page goes up to the thalamus. These three cueing systems are used to create meaning. I'll explain that a little bit more. Here's the three cueing systems, semantic, syntactic, and graphophonological. Semantic is context, meaning the monkey ate a bu Most of us would figure out that is banana. We are using the context some, uh, of what's around it, meaning to create meaning, to predict the words as we are reading. This is what most of us do as efficient readers, and this is the most efficient and economical way to recognize words as we are reading. It takes up very little working space in working memory. Semantic cueing system. Syntax is using word order or grammar to figure out what the next word might be. We also use this quite a bit to help us understand and create meaning with what's on the page. And the last one, the phonological, phono meaning sound, putting letters to sounds. Now this is the least efficient of all the three cueing systems because it takes up so much room in working memory. I could hold seven letters or seven ideas. An idea is bigger than a letter. We want students to use as few letter cues as possible. Sometimes teaching students to sound out a word is the worst thing we can do. Because look at the relative unimportance of letters. They're important, but not that important. These are all scrambled letters inside. I kept the first and last. I think this is a wonderful class. You are going to be great special education teachers. You are all truly amazing human beings. We can read that. Letters are important, but not that important. Think about text with all but the initial vowels removed. Once upon a time, there was a handsome prince. Letters are important, but not that important. And you're saying, well, what about vowels? Vowels must be very important. Well, let's look at this. The first one has vowels only. Could you create meaning with that? No. The second one, just the consonants. Yes. The Green Bay Packers are the best football team in the NFL. They have a great quarterback. All right. So is it really that important that we focus on what a diphthong is and all the scope and sequence stuff? Not really. Letters are important, but not that important in creating meaning. Some big ideas. We don't really 
teach reading, we help to develop students' ability to create meaning with print. 99.89% of all the students in our schools already know, they know how to read. They understand letter sound word. They just can't read very well. They need lots and lots and lots of practice, instruction, and activities used to develop all three cueing systems, not just phonics. What happens often with struggling readers, they get more, more phonics, and they see letters instead of words and ideas. Reading is an interactive process. We use what's in the head, top down, with what's on the page to make sense. Good readers do not read and process every letter. Our brain just makes us think that's the way. And the big idea, more information actually, this is from brain imaging research, flows from the cortex to the thalamus than the thalamix up during the act of reading. More information is coming down. We're using that to predict what the next word is than from the bottom up. This is the transactive model of reading. There's almost 10 times more information flowing down than flowing up. We use what's in our head to create meaning.